Praise the Lord. If you'll turn with me, please, this morning to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. When Jesus is Lord, things change. When Jesus is Lord, things change. In Matthew chapter 5, and verse 6 is our first scripture. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they might be filled. They shall be filled. I want you to let that sink into your spirit as we begin. They shall be filled. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. Anybody being transformed? Into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm being changed. Acts 1.8, we quoted a few moments ago, but you shall receive what power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth or the age. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's here. Thank you for the, our new members, Lord. Thank you for just uh, the way you're speaking, moving, comforting, and helping already. Now, God, speak through your word, and we thank you for an anointing to touch our ears and hearts, and we give you glory. Thank you for continuing to change us in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. You can be seated. When Jesus is Lord, things change. Today, we remember our fallen. They're the men and women who've paid the ultimate price for our freedom. As we remember, we also pray for those who daily put themselves in harm's way. I've received stories recently that we're not free to share about some, what's been happening in Afghanistan and some of the deaths and devastation that's there. And I've been asked to please not make it public. So our men and women that are serving in Afghanistan and other parts of the world really need our prayer. And let me just throw this in too. Christians around the world need our prayer and support. The last three uh, ministers that were et et executed in Pakistan were Assembly of God pastors. Do you realize that? While we're sitting here in the air condition in the padded pews, fellow pastors, Assemblies of God, have been executed for their faith. So as we pray for military, pray for those serving the Lord around the world as well. Today is also Pentecost Sunday. We celebrate the outpouring of His Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, and the baptism with the Spirit that has been promised to us. But we must also remember that Jesus died, didn't He? And He was buried, and He rose again, so He could not only save us from the power of sin, but so we could, He could send the Holy Spirit and the power from heaven. How many of you know the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for every believer? So when Jesus left here, it's for our salvation, but also for our infilling of the Holy Ghost. You can live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The first time I attended a Pentecostal church, uh, it scared me so much I wasn't sure I was going to go back. Can anybody relate to that? But there was something there. There was something real. There was an anointing that, that drew me and spoke to me. And not long after, accepted Jesus as, as Savior at age 12. And shortly after that was baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. I want to say again, you can live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now when Jesus is Lord, things change because you change. When Jesus is Lord of your life, you continue to change. Amen? Now when you are not getting closer to the Lord, when you're not becoming more like Jesus, there's something missing in your relationship with God. Chat me down, that's a truth. Whether you, amen? Something wrong in our relationship with God if we're not getting closer. Salvation is about relationship. Life in the Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is about relationship. Because as we accept Christ as our Savior, we come in relationship with Him and the Father. As we're filled with the Holy Spirit, our relation continues to move forward and to intensify. When Jesus is Lord, you change. The word Lord 
means supreme authority or master. So supreme authority or master. So I guess the question is, who's leading? Who's guiding your life today? Is it the Lord? Each one of us must receive Jesus Christ as Savior and have a relationship with Him in order to be born again, to live for Him, and to make it to heaven. Every person has to receive Jesus for him or herself. Then we must move forward to make Him Lord of our lives. So it's got to be go, our relationship's got to go beyond a prayer to a relationship. So I ask today, who's in charge? Who's in charge of your life? You or the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it me or is it Him? So as we begin this morning, I want to ask a question. Are you hungry for more of Jesus? Is there anybody in the house that's hungry for more of Jesus? Dear Lord, God, if not, Lord, stir up our heart today. Somehow move by the Holy Ghost. Somehow speak through this Word and stir our hearts up as believers to hunger after you like we've never hungered after you before. Are you hungry for more of Jesus? He says, Blessed are those those which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. See, hunger and thirst express a deep longing. A deep longing. Do you have a longing for God? Do you have that deep desire for God? You know, the word righteousness simply means you des- you, your desire is to do what God requires. Because if you and I do what God requires, guess what? We will live righteously. We will live in a way that pleases Him. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, those that desire to please Him, those who want to walk in His ways, He said, they shall be filled. If you have that deep longing, I know there's times in all of our lives that we go through things or times to where the hunger's not there as it ought to be. Can anybody say amen to that besides me? We go through that and we struggle sometimes in our relationship with God. and We struggle sometimes because of the affairs of life. But that hunger and thirst. You see, the blessing for those who have a deep longing for God is the feeling. If you hunger and thirst, you will be filled. They shall be filled. Do you have a deep longing for God today? Do you desire to know Jesus even more and better? Do you long for whatever He has for you? How many of you know it's really safe to pray and say, okay God, whatever you have, I want it. He'll never embarrass you. He'll never treat you wrong. He'll never give you a bad gift. His gifts are always good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So are you hungry for Jesus this morning? When Jesus is Lord, you change. Sometimes we'll make Him Lord, but we don't keep Him Lord. When Jesus is Lord, you begin to desire what He has for you. When Jesus is Lord, you desire what He has promised. When Jesus is Lord, you get closer to God. Your relationship with Him becomes stronger. When Jesus is Lord... Uh, when Jesus is Lord, you'll love your wife more and better. When Jesus is Lord, you'll love your husband more and better. Can you say amen? Amen. All the men should have shouted with Brother Gore over there. When Jesus is Lord, you'll love your church. When Jesus is Lord, you'll even love your pastor. What about that? (laughs) When Jesus is Lord, you'll love each other. Brother, you bracken, she offended me. Well, get over it. Show some love for for that person, for God. Let him bring the unity back to your life. Amen? When Jesus is Lord of your life, you will continue to change. There is no stopping place when you make Jesus your Lord and you keep him the Lord of your life. When he's your master, when he's the authority in your life, you will continue to change. Uh, do you have a longing for God? I want to go back to 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 that we read just a few moments ago. 3 and 18. But we all with open face, beholding as in in a glass the glory of the Lord, and are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 
If you really study the scripture, it's trying to say that the Bible is a mirror. The Bible is a mirror. But this mirror, when you look into it, reveals Jesus. The pages of God's Word puts together a picture of who Jesus is. If there's anything that God is wanting to reveal to you through this book, it's Jesus. That's why the book of Revelation is called Revelation. It's a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. This book is filled with Jesus. The complete biblical library, verse 18 says, As the believer contemplates Jesus through prayer and reading the word, the Spirit of the Lord changes him into the likeness and the appearance that he beholds. He is transformed or changed into that image from one glorious level to another. The complete likeness of Jesus will come when he sees Jesus face to face. Now, I'm going to take this mirror. Brother Jason, come stand right here if you would. Now, I want you to look in this mirror, and I want you to tell me. Are you ready? Yeah. No, come over here. See, who do you see? Does he look like Jesus to you? <laughs> Sister Faye, come up here. Look in this mirror. Remember, if you're staying in the Word, praying, and you're seeking after God, God's Word is a mirror. Amen. When we look in a mirror at home, or when you look into the Word, are you ready? I want you to look in this mirror. What do you see? Who do you see? Jesus. Jesus. This is the word of God. Let's pick on our youth pastor. Come up here, Brother Jonathan. You read the word? You pray? This is the word. This is the mirror of the word of God. Now I want you to tell the truth to this congregation, what you see when you look in this picture. Are you ready? Jesus. Jesus. The Word is a mirror. Isn't that what that scripture is saying? When you and I stay in the Word, the mirror of the Word always reveals Jesus. And the good thing is, how many of you want to see the mirror? How many of you want to see the other side of the mirror? Are you ready? His name is Jesus. The Word is a mirror. You make Jesus Lord, and you're going to change. It's when we cease to make Him Lord that we become something we don't want to be. But when we make Him Lord, and we serve Him, and we stay in His Word, listen, when Jesus is the master of your life, when you look into the Word of God, you don't see Jason, you don't see Jonathan or Faye or these others. You see Jesus. The Word is a mirror that always reveals Jesus. Dear God, hallelujah. How many of you know Jesus loves you? How many of you know He wants you to put Him first in your life? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus is Lord of your life, you will be changing and becoming like Him. I want to ask you again, are you hungry for more? Are you hungry for more? Anybody on this side hungry for more of Jesus? Anybody in this area hungry for more of Jesus? How about over here? Anybody here hungry for Jesus? Come on, let me hear you. Are you hungry for Jesus? See, if you're hungry, you're going to change. Men, women, husbands, wives, teenagers, make Jesus Lord and He'll change you. You'll become who He wants you to be. Remember, Jesus' Savior must become Jesus' Lord. Jesus' Savior must become Jesus' Lord. Number two, you shall receive power after. Acts 1.8, we've already read a few times today. Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Spirit baptism 
was one of the last things Jesus talked about before he left this earth. He wanted his church that was coming after him, that was going to preach about him, to experience the power of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One of the last things he talked about to the church, the church was birthed through the power of, of, of Pentecost, on, of power of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. I want to read a few scriptures real quickly this morning that lead us up to the 120 being filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water, Jesus said, uh, uh, John said, but he who comes after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. We need some fire back in the church. <laughs> Amen? He said he would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Power. Zeal, zeal, power, zeal comes with this experience of the baptism of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost and fire. Anybody need any fire today? Luke 24, 49. 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, Jesus said, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So before Jesus left again, he said, I want you to wait. I want you to spend time in that room. I want you to wait. In my presence, you will be endued with power from on high. The early church got its kickoff in the power of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And if the early church began that way, how many of us know we still need that power today for the church to be what it ought to be? The churches I understand that are having the greatest success as far as salvations and, and miracles and things uh, on the mission field are those who are Pentecostal in faith, who believe in the power and experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Does that make sense to you? Acts 2, 1 through 4. Are you ready? Oh, are you hungry? For more of Jesus? Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Are you hungry for more? But Brother Brecken, and I have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, if you are and you're full and you're walking in that, guess what? You have a greater hunger now than before. Are you hungry? Jesus told the disciples to go to Jerusalem, wait for the Holy Ghost to come. Jesus told them, uh, John told them, Jesus would baptize them with Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus told them they would receive power and be witnesses. They listened to Jesus and they obeyed. They believed the promise of God. They didn't know what to expect on the day of Pentecost, did they? All they know is Jesus said, Go, I'm sending the Holy Spirit, and He's going to fill you with power, and He's going to baptize you with power and with fire. After all the disciples had been through, and those 120 in the upper room, I was thinking before service, I'm wondering if this is what they did when they were in that room. Now Jesus taught them some things that helped them to be able to continue to rejoice and preach after He ascended back to the Father. But here they are in the upper room, 120, and, and they're supposed to be, you know, they're praying. And, and, and I'm just trying to imagine, they don't know what's going to happen. They just know what Jesus said. They've never experienced it before. So i got a feeling here's how some of them probably pray. Lord God, I sure miss Jesus. And Lord, I don't know, Father God, I don't know really understand all the reasons he had to leave. And God, I don't understand everything about this Holy Ghost that he's been telling us about. But God, I just want what you have for me. And I want what Jesus promised. And Lord Jesus, I want your church that you've called us to lead to experience what you said the church would have. So Father God, I don't understand all this, but I know you're God, and I know Jesus is Messiah, and I know Jesus is gone, and I know you've promised to send the Holy Ghost. I don't know that much about the Holy Ghost, but God, just go ahead. And sometimes we have to get out of ourselves and say, okay, go ahead, God. 
Where were you when you were baptized in the Holy Ghost? The old sanctuary. How long ago? Any years? 93. 93, right after we came. My goodness. Where were you in the old sanctuary? 93. You were a lot younger than 30 then, wasn't you? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Now, you don't have to tell me the time, but uh, Jonathan, where were you when you were baptized in the Holy Ghost? In your bedroom. Why did it happen there? You were ready, expecting, and asking in his bedroom at home. I want you to think about that. How many of you remember Reba Harville? Elderly lady was in our church, going on to be with the Lord. Never been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I remember praying for her in the service. She wanted to be baptized in the Holy Ghost so bad she couldn't hardly stand it. Couldn't hardly stand herself. She wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Didn't happen in church. She went home. Already an elderly lady lay down on her bed. And that night laying on her bed, the Holy Ghost came. She began speaking in other tongues as the Holy Spirit filled her laying on her bed. has a lot to do with how hungry you are. Amen? And accepting the promise that God has made to you and to me. They listened to Jesus. They obeyed Him. They believed the promise of God. They received. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in other tongues. Listen to the question the crowd asked who heard them speaking in tongues on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2 and verse 12 says this. Acts 2 and 12. And they were all amazed. They were doubting. Some doubted, saying one to another, What does this mean? Kind of like the first time I walked in that Pentecostal church. What in the world's going on? Right over here on this side, a bunch of teenagers. And I was back there somewhere, first time in the church, on my crutches that day. And here are all these teenagers, hands lifted, clapping, shouting, worshiping. Can you believe teenagers could do such a thing? It's got my attention. God was moving in that house. I got saved pretty quick. Then I got baptized in the Holy Ghost myself. What does this mean? Then when they said, what does this mean? Peter, who before being filled with the Holy Spirit, who had denied Jesus. How many of you remember? He denied Jesus. He'd been afraid to stand up for the Lord. He was afraid to be the witness that he should have been when Jesus needed him. But now in Acts chapter 2 and verse 14, look at Peter. Here's the man that was a coward before. Now he's received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Look, Peter stood up with the eleven. He lifted his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken unto these words, to my words. For these are not drunken. I've seen some people look like they're drunk in church. Anybody else? And I've seen some drunk in church. And that's the truth. <laughs> for these are not drunken as you suppose. <laughs> Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. When they start saying, what does this mean? He took them to scripture. He said, this is what the Bible says. And he began to explain what was happening on the day of Pentecost from the scripture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is that. Peter boldly preached Jesus. The crowd began to ask Peter, what do, you need, what do we need to do? Holy Ghost gets to move and people start searching their hearts. They start asking Jesus, what do I need to do? Something's wrong in my life. How do I need to change? God, what do I need to do to get this power? Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, after this, what are we, what are we supposed to do? I don't know what to do. Peter said to them, repent. That's a good thing to say today. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remissions of sins. So repent and be baptized in water. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent of your sins, be baptized in water, and receive the Holy Ghost. So here's Peter preaching the word. He stands up where he wouldn't stand up before. He said, you'll receive power to be a witness. Peter really received that, didn't he? Because now he's standing up. And he stood up in that crowd and he began to preach the word. And Acts 2.41, look what it says. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 people received Jesus as Savior. What does... 
What does being, bab- being filled with the Holy Spirit mean? It means power when witnessing. It means boldness when teaching and preaching. It means power to live for Jesus daily. Anybody need help to live for Jesus? How many of you need all the help you can get? Hallelujah. It means also greater understanding of the Scriptures. When Peter was asked, what did this mean? He went straight to the Scriptures and quoted Old Testament prophecy concerning the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Spirit baptism. Uh, Now Acts 2 real quickly, verse 16. Acts 2 and 16, "But but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days. How many of you know we're in the last days? Saith God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. How many of you want to see your sons and daughters' lives changed? God's poured out His spirit already. Your men, young men shall see dreams. Your, old men, uh, your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. By the way, I'm still seeing visions. Okay. <laughs> this is premature. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy, they shall speak for me. They're going to speak for me. When Jesus is Lord, you keep changing. When Jesus is Lord, you're hungry for more. When he's no longer Lord, you don't care whether you come to church or not. You don't care whether you stay through the whole service or not. You don't really care about the things of God like you used to. Am I telling you the truth today? Oh, Jesus. Verse 21, And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter backed up the experience of spirit baptism with Scripture. When Jesus is Lord, your life will have a lot... Lord of your life, you will have a longing for more of Jesus. We've got to keep Him Lord. Listen, the the devil will fight, sickness will come, problems in marriage, problems in health, and sometimes if we're not careful, we get our mind on all these other things, and and we don't keep Jesus out front and keep Him Lord like He should be. Been there, done that. Can anybody else raise your hand and say, that's been me? So somehow we've got to keep Him in the front. We need Him to guide us. We need Him to empower us. We need Him to enlighten us through the Word of God. We need the power of the Holy Spirit so we can stand strong and be like Peter. Declare who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Your desire will be to please Him. You find yourself seeking His own will above your own. Some of us make up our minds before we ever ask God what He wants. God, I've decided to do this. Will you bless me in this? When He's Lord, we want His will, not ours. We'll put ourselves aside and seek God's answer, not ours. The experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit is an experience that operates in your daily life in your daily life. Now listen, being filled with the Holy Spirit or baptized in the Holy Spirit doesn't make us superior to others. You must be born again to walk with Jesus and to make it to heaven. But He's promised the baptism in the Holy Spirit to every believer. Amen. And it's every day not just the speaking in tongues. That's part of it. Now the focus of being filled with the Spirit is twofold, and I'm getting to a close. One, it deepens our worship of the Lord through giving us a language of praise that we have not learned, a language speaking in tongues. It's not just the initial evidence. You find yourself in your prayer life Praying in tongues and worshiping the Lord. Praising in tongues. And that builds you up spiritually and strengthens you. And there's not one person in this room that doesn't need that. Oh, there's more. So the first one again, it deepens our worship of the Lord through praise in tongues. A language we never learned. If you ever 
hear if anybody here praying to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And you ever hear somebody walk up to them and say, say these words, you come get me. Because they're not going to say that to anybody sick in the day. You hear somebody come up and say, say these baby words. You come get me. I'm not going to have that. If Jesus can't baptize you with the Holy Ghost, you don't need it. He's the Holy Ghost baptizer. He's the one that fills people with the Spirit. Can you say amen to that today? We're not going to allow that here. When you're hungry, he said you'll be filled. Jonathan said he was ready. Boy, he was ready. He was anxious. He was hungry. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? The second thing is, it also gives us power in our Christian witness. In our Christian witness. He does give us boldness and He gives us wisdom to use that boldness. So I ask as we draw to a close, are you hungry for more of Jesus today? Do you have a longing for God? You know, as you grow older and you step out on your own and get to college and jobs and different kind of things, there's all kinds of voices to speak to you. But listen, not just the high school student and the college student, but every one of us, there's a plenty of voices out there. And we have to have Jesus as Lord so we can make the right decisions and hear the right voice. When Jesus is Lord of your life, you will desire more. When we keep Him Lord, we want more of Him. David Wilkerson, before he passed away a few years ago, uh, before he went to be with the Lord, wrote a book about hungry for Jesus, hungry for more of Jesus. I'm hungry today. Anybody else? I'm not hungry. I like banana pudding, but that's not my desire right now. I like fried chicken, but don't leave yet, okay? But nothing satisfies. No one satisfies like Jesus. Is He Lord? Do you really want to be here? Are you committed to Him? Are you committed to this church? Is He Lord? Do you want more of Him in your life? Or does it even matter to you anymore? If we get cold, we can blame nobody but ourselves. Don't you think that, don't you know the devil wants to steal your hunger for God? He wants to steal your joy in serving. Somehow we've got to keep Jesus Lord. When Jesus is Lord of your life, you will desire more. Even after being filled with the Holy Spirit, you will desire more of Him. <laughs> this is that. Amen? This is that. Acts 2.39 For the promises to you and to your children, the promises for everyone the Lord calls to salvation, everyone that's ever been called into relationship with Jesus, the promise of the baptism with the Holy Spirit is for you, for them, for Him, for her. My desire as a grandparent is to see all my children, um, as a parent and a grandparent and a great-grandparent already, as young as I am. I want all my children, all my grandchildren, all my grandchildren to know Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. I also want them to experience the baptism in the Holy Spirit and live a life full of the Spirit of God. I don't want my children to grow up and my grandchildren to grow up without power. I want them to know Jesus is alive and He's well and I want them to know the power of Pentecost that comes through the Holy Ghost as He fills them and operates in their lives. So as you stand with me as I close. In Sunday school today, Brother Gary's class, Spirit enters into our lives the moment we accept Christ. However, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is a unique experience occurring after salvation. God's will is that every believer in Christ be baptized in the Holy Spirit. We don't have to make ourselves worthy or measure up to any human standard of spiritual progress. It's a gift of God's grace. The only prerequisite for receiving, prerequisite is receiving Jesus. Every believer who has not received should seek God's gift of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody here It took you a while? don't understand you know, I know a man said he prayed 25 years and finally received evidently he wasn't ready for 25 years we need his power to do his work and live out his will for our lives so God wants to baptize in his spirit all 
who seek him.